So there are two main ways of incorporating AI into an application, broadly speaking. You can either use an API for an externally hosted LLM or you could self-host one. Self-hosting means you have full control over the model. It's great for data privacy, it's easier to scale, and it can be more cost effective. Now, if you're unsure how to do that and it seems a little complicated, you're in the right place because the good news is on fly.io, you can self-host a model using just one file. Hi, my name is Annie. I work at fly.io, duh. And today we're gonna to be deploying an Olama app that runs models on Fly GPUs. Now, Olama is a wonderful open source tool that allows you to interface with different LLMs. And if we were to self-host one of these models, what we need is a persistent place to store it and the muscle to run it. And that is where GPUs come in. So a typical web application will have access to any number of CPU cores, which are great for many things, but fall short when it comes to really intensive tasks like running AI workloads. GPUs, however, run tasks in parallel, which makes them perfect for the job. Now, realistically, most web apps do not need GPUs, but if you're using an LLM, you certainly do. And luckily on fly.io, we've got you covered. So let me show you how. Okay, first make sure you have the fly CLI installed, and then in an empty project directory, we're gonna run fly launch dash dash no deploy. This simply creates a new fly app, generates a fly.toml, but deploys no code, which I mean, we, we don't have any code, so. So we're gonna tweak our fly.toml file a bit. We're gonna keep the name of the app, but then change the region to something like Chicago, which is one of the regions that has fly GPUs available. Then let's define the specs for our GPU. We're gonna be using the A100 40 gigabyte GPU. That should be plenty. Next, let's define the image that we want to use. Now, fly apps are delivered as Docker images, but you don't actually have to have a Docker file. You can just say, hey, use this image. And that's what we're doing here. Now, Alama runs as an HTTP service, so let's set that up now. One awesome thing to note here is this min machines running is set to zero. This means that whenever your Olama app is not in use, it'll scale down the machines to zero, so you're only paying for what you use. Okay, and lastly, we need a place to store our models that we get from Olama. So what we're saying in this mount section is, hey, anything inside root slash dot Olama needs to be persisted in a volume. And that is it. That is the only file you need to self-host an LLM on fly.io. And if you just wanna grab this file from GitHub, I've got a link down below. Now, there's one more thing I wanna talk about, which is security. You see, we don't actually want this application to be available to the public internet because we don't wanna be charged for usage by random people. Luckily, fly apps in your organization are connected through the same private network by default. And so if we assign a private IPv6 address to our Olama app, we can make sure that it's only accessible to our fly apps. So to do this, we're gonna run the command fly IPs allocate v6 dash dash private. Okay, great. Now all there is to do is deploy our app. So let's run fly deploy. And there you go. Now the output might say something like, hey, visit your newly deployed app at something something dot fly dot dev. But this is kind of a lie because we literally just made it inaccessible to the internet. But if we want to test it out, we can SSH into an ephemeral fly machine and run this command. From here, you can just run Olama like you would if you were running it locally. So you can pull down a model and then run it with a given prompt. Now, actually using our self-hosted model is as easy as sending an HTTP request. So let's take a look at a simple JavaScript implementation. First, let's define the parameters that we want to send to our model. So this is the model name, the prompt, and whether or not we want to stream the response. Let's set it to false for now. Next, we're making a post request to our Olama app using this dot flycast address. Now remember, our Olama app is not accessible to the public internet. So it's this dot flycast address that allows us to access it through our fly private network. Last little note here, if you want to use this Olama instance in an app you're running locally, you can set up a connection to your Fly network using WireGuard. I've got a link to the instructions down below, but really it's just as simple as download WireGuard, generate a file, import the file. Okay, congrats! You now have a fully functioning self-hosted LLM on Fly.io. So to recap, all you have to do is configure your Fly.toml and allocate an IPv6 address. Then just remember to access the app through a .flycast address 
and you're good to go. If you'd like to learn more about Fly GPUs, be sure to check out the docs at fly.io slash docs slash GPUs. With that being said, thank you all so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye. Now the only thing to do is deploy your application. So let's run fly. Oh, I only have a hair in my mouth. Cool. Now Olama runs as an HTTP server. HTTP. H. <laughs> okay.